this feels a little bit too early for traveling to work. Good morning, or should I say, good night, because <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning at the moment. Luckily I came in a little bit earlier as well because I had a little bit of an issue. Went to start a truck, not taking over, completely dead. The battery are completely gone. So I'm thinking, crap, four o'clock in the morning, there's only a couple of warehouse lads what are in there at the moment. Luckily though, one of them helped me out and managed to find some jump leads for the trucks. So they are truck ones, don't worry, I'm not using these car ones or anything. Um, just got a jump start, got it started. Got to leave it ticking over now, so don't worry. I'm not trying to kill the environment by leaving the truck running. The battery's dead, so I've got to keep it running for a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit easier <laughs> from now on and not just one thing after the other. So I think what's caused the issue, I've had the PDA plugged in over the weekend in this charger and I think it's been drawing power so when I came in this morning there was nothing whatsoever and um, we're running really far behind now as well because it's 10 to 5 in the morning I really want to be on the road by half past four ideally that's why I came in a little bit early but unfortunately we have things what get in our way sometimes don't we for some reason the night light's not working that much it's quite dark in here too so looking just over three hours drive and 185 miles. First destination is going to be in Hatfield. Now to get there is down the M6, cutting across, down towards the M1 to the A1, and it's just there. I've got to say though, know, driving around the roads at five o'clock in the morning, it's so peaceful, isn't it? So nice. Time now, we're at five in the morning, uh, bank order Tuesday. So I do hope everybody had a great weekend and I had a good bank holiday, guys. Um, as you know, it was Leanne's 30th birthday on Saturday. Unfortunately, we couldn't really do too much for him because we had loads of plans made to go around her family's, have a buffet or get a takeaway and spend time with our family. Unfortunately, COVID decided to rear its ugly head again and her whole family come down with COVID. My mum was pretty bad, she's all right now. Um, but like proper bedridden all week so that was that plans done we couldn't go out for a walk or enjoy like some activities because of the weather it was just horrendous and throwing it down on Saturday so I felt really bad for her I really did but luckily this weekend we are going away to Wales uh, I'm going there for five days so I will try and vlog as much as I can when I'm there but next week it might be as not not be as frequent unfortunately so that is the reason why if you're wondering next week uh, it's a little bit every other day or anything it's just we might not be doing something on some days and we're just putting our feet up and chilling out because you know a holiday after all you need to re-energize don't you it's not all about being on the go constantly so i'm hoping next week leanne to go have a little bit better time um, at least to try and book a good spa retreat for her as well so we can get away for the night now we can stay at home with my dad's and then we just spend a night in a nice hotel, get a nice spa treatment and proper treat as well for a birthday. I'm just hoping Birmingham is not going to be too busy for us and yeah we get past that with no problems. Uh, I'm not going to do too much to the camera at the moment or time lapse because obviously you can't really see too much but this is a little bit of an insight if you're doing driving, especially on nights. This is what it pretty much looks like really. <laughs> um, on nights as well, there's a lot of road closures. So just bear that in mind if you're a new driver, you're starting on the night shift, which a lot of people do normally do. And yeah, there's a lot of road closures, so just make sure you plan ahead and just take that into consideration with some places. Even at quarter past six in the morning, <laughs> It backs up on the M6 just as we're about to enter Birmingham. So we've just gone past Hilton Services and I think it's going to be Junction 11 off the top of my head for Walsall we're coming up towards. So it always backs up right down here but leave quarter past six in the morning it's like this. So this is where we've got to leave early as we can. Warrington start at four o'clock in the morning leave for about quarters of five just to try and get past this lap but we've still got stuck in it in a moment hopefully this is the only part of Birmingham we're going to be struggling with the spaghetti junction as well can be quite bad when you reach that part 
But yeah, Birmingham in general, it's just an absolute nightmare regardless whatever time of day or night you come. don't think there's been any accidents either, I think it's just a case of congestion around this part of the M6. Just everybody trying to get to work that little bit earlier, everybody has the same idea don't they? Jump on the M6 for 6 o'clock, try and beat the traffic but unfortunately everybody does it. It creates more traffic then doesn't it? We've come down here at about half 8, 9 o'clock. My god, it's an absolute nightmare around here. Just stopped off quickly at Rugby Services. 20 past 7, so we're not too bad for timing. Got about an hour and a half left until we get towards Hatfield. And you know me, I love the Greggs. £3.40 on for a bacon roll and a coffee. You can't go wrong for that, can you? You can definitely tell winter's coming as well because it's absolutely freezing at the moment. And when you're getting up in the morning, it's darker as well. Because you used to get up at six o'clock in the morning and it literally used to be like this. Whereas now it's pitch black. I'm currently 74 miles and about an hour and 25 minutes, give or take. Depends on traffic. Just arrived now at 10 past 10 down at South of Hatfield. Had a little bit of traffic coming down the A1, but other than that, it's not been too bad. Obviously, with the M6 as well, the way it always is M6, pain in the backside, isn't it? But we're here at the moment. I've got here with literally one minute driving time, so hopefully the infringements won't be coming through for it. We just made it in time. Side of the road at the moment, just outside where we need to deliver to. Got about 23 minutes left as well. Overall, it's been all right so far. I've, my next one is going to be 47 miles away. Looking about an hour's drive. Might be a little bit longer than that. Going over um, down to the M25, across Dartford Bridge, and it's just a couple of miles off Dartford. So hopefully we'll be able to travel back up for a couple of hours as well. Well, let's take this opportunity, have a little bit of a salad that Leanne got me. Oh, I got me, like she made, it looks quite nice that one. Cheers Leanne. And as you can see as well, the parking situation around here is just bloody awful. These vans on the left hand side was clear when I came. I stuck on brakes, so I can't move. Now, they've just appeared from everywhere, just blocking the whole road. Absolute chaos, absolute chaos. <laughs> So we've got that van blocks there, he's trying to get down there, these lot are coming out of there. That guy, I don't know what he's doing. Behind me, in the mirror, there's like 10 cars trying to get down. It's absolutely chaos this estate, it really is. It's just not fit for trucks, but it's just full of business units. My worst, that forklift guy just then, proper cockney geezer, like every other second word that you said. It was like a swear word. <laughs> it just made me laugh. It was like just kicking off about other drivers that are coming and stuff. He's like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, real sound lad and that. It makes him laugh. Proper cockney geezers. So let's finally get out of here. We're due to get to our second drop before 12 o'clock, 45 minutes away. And hopefully we can get out of this end of the road because as you've seen before, it's just absolute chaos. Here we go folks, time to play a game of Wacky Racers. Just about to cross over the Dartford crossing. It's always bloody chaos around here, everybody just cuts everybody up. Not a fun place to drive sometimes. 
but if you're sticking your lane, hope the best. <laughs> Honestly, I've had, had probably about six or seven bloody near crashes on this bridge. That's from either people driving about 30 miles per hour, and then you've got to cross over into a different lane, and you've got people just weaving in and out of traffic. Uh, we've got seven and a half miles to go until we're at our destination. It's only about ten minutes. I think it's like two or three junctions. I think it's actually two junctions after the bridge. If I'm correct in thinking, this is the um, River Thames, is it? Which leads straight into London city centre. You've got the harbour on the right hand side. You've got a massive multi-storey car park. It looks like car park firm that a manufacturers or something because none of the cars have got their registration plates on I don't know if you noticed that Some big boats on the left hand side big shipping container ones and we've got a ferry as well on the right but yeah I like driving over the bridge itself though if it's pretty cool the views that you get to see even on a clear day like today, I can actually see the shard of London City Centre. Down is the, uh, the mobile. One of the other big buildings that are in there. And I wonder what the traffic's like on the way back. Is it free flowing or is it stood still? We'll find out in a second. You do get to see some good places of being a driver. I know I say it all the time, you probably get bored of it, but Scotland all day. <laughs> Driving up Scotland, I just love it. Yeah, it looks actually quite backed up on the other side. I'm listening. Uh, I'm sat down, stop listening. <laughs> I'm in the right lane as well. There we go, officially in Kent. It looks really busy on the other side actually. Debating which way to go back. Whether go around the ring road and jump up the M40 and then go straight up there because there's quite a lot of service stations on the M40. So we'll be staying the night out anyway, regardless. Or do a come back this way, sit in loads of traffic, hit the A1, and then go up the A1 to the A14. I'll probably be able to pull over in a lay by up that way. Choices, choices. Which way would you go if you're delivering in Kent? Try and get plenty of room. Ideally, you want to try and keep like a truck width between you and the one in front, so you got enough braking distance. I really don't understand some people as well when you see them and rub each other's ass. Yeah, traffic's backed right up down this way. Might actually go south south and westbound on the M25 to come south of London. Which way are they going? Are they coming off? Yeah? I'm a little bit unsure then. Yeah, traffic looks horrendous there. I don't fancy sitting in that for an hour when I could be going around the other side. Come up the M40. When they're going to go back to last night, it should be just up here on the left hand side. Which is really weird as well around here, because on the M25 ring road we've just come off, on that roundabout, there's like seven or eight houses here to the left, and then it's just like industry estates everywhere. How would you live there? It's crazy. According to Google Maps, 
it's down that country lane and there's nothing there on Google Maps so it's in the middle of nowhere so that's not helping us however the industry estate on this left hand side here now where that car's just come from they've got a turning circle down at the end so I can at least get in and then have a look around um, we're looking for unit 6 um, ok unit 6 it doesn't have anything there seems security will be able to help us so it's strictly no turning as well which isn't good don't get out oh yeah mate I'm looking for is it on here yeah let's go back to towards 25 yeah 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 Perfect, cheers, thanks for that mate. Right, I take it, that's happened quite a few times then. Back in speed bump. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everything's bloody flying. God, lucky I've not got a drink in my cup. Some of these speed bumps, I don't know if you noticed it, if you go over it like five miles an hour, like I am now, six miles an hour, Christ, you get thrown around everywhere, but if you go over like 15 miles per hour, you go over it nice and smooth. Bloody hell, now give myself whiplash. There's no need to have a speed bump like that. Oh God, we've got another two here. Yeah, should be able to spin it around just up here. So it has paid off then coming into this little unit with a security guard knowing exactly where it is after probably 1500 drivers doing the same. At least it's HCV friendly as well around here, which is always a bonus. So we're here, our second and final drop for the day. Um, it's been all right actually overall. Get down here, I've just put it in a sat nav as well. I'm looking at four hours to get back home. And I've got a possible, with an extended, I've got four and a half hours drive time left. We could make it back home tonight, which would be cool, because I'm not expecting it to be getting home. I'm expecting a night out, but M25, M1, M6, it's all unpredictable. It all has to be a nice clear road to get back. So let's see what happens on, on that side of things for driving. Um, working time, I can work until seven o'clock tonight and I started at four o'clock this morning. It's a long day, isn't it? But whilst I'm here and I'm waiting to get unloaded, I might as well tell you the story and a little bit of an update of our possible paranormal activity we have in our house. In one of our previous videos, I've put up um, one of the toys started going off in its bag on its own on the bottom of the stairs It's been there for a couple of hours not been touched Nobody's been near it for a good few hours and then it started playing on its own then it creepy as hell So this week a little bit of an update for you Albert has been Really creepy now. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose because he's a two-year-old um, But they do say that kids special babies when they're that age have a connection to the paranormal realm or whatever it is you want to say so what he's been doing is um freaking leanne out really bad and when he's going to bed he'll start on his own spontaneously start doing actions for wheels on the bus now he can't talk it properly like wheels on the bus our baby shark but he'll do the actions for it so he'll sit there smiling to himself looking past leanne into the corner of the room doing like wheels on a bus and then like doing actions for it and umping and closing the doors he'll start clapping to himself giggling a little bit looking into the corner of the room and then he'll start doing baby shark so it'll be like doing the actions and then putting his hands together for the grandma and grandpa etc after he does this he waves to the corner of the room smiles and then rolls over to go to sleep so leanne's like what's what are you looking at bud <laughs> what are you looking at so then we've gone over the camera, which is a like infrared camera, and we can see like a bright orb going from like the entrance to the room 
right down to the window. So I'm going to show you this clip now. Personally, normally, I'd dismiss that as like dust particles. And you do get a lot of dust particles on them style of cameras, don't you? And you can see them all, but they're all like grainy and gray. Whereas this one, it's like a bright yellow orb going around and it's like, what, what is that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? What's your thoughts on it? I will be honest with you as well. I am a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to paranormal stuff. Because I've always said to Leanne is, when you go to these paranormal people who do readings and stuff like mediums and psychics what you want to call them um a lot of them are con men aren't they let's be honest with you and they're taking advantage of people who are grieving and stuff and that's why i've never really done one you do get sometimes the ones who look a little bit more legitimate with what they're saying so you're thinking how do you know that i've never done one personally but leanne's done quite a few and one or two she's told me i'm thinking yeah bullshit and they've been like really in detail and know stuff and i'm like okay that's you know, plausible maybe but then i've always said to leanne how come like humans have a spirit so when you go to these meetings it's always like your grandma or grandpa who comes through and stuff why's well, never like a t-rex hey eh? why's well, like never get haunted by a t-rex just appearing in your spirit medium and flipping the table over and trying to like do what it does do you know what I mean? it's always people never like your dog or an animal that's been extinct or anything, is it? That's what I don't think. That's why I think it's a little bit sus. Oh dear, could be here a while. Time's now two o'clock. Let's hit the road again. Going off the sat nav, we're looking at a four hour drive. I've got about four hours and 25 minutes of driving. We might be able to get quite close to home at least. And it's 226 miles. I changed my mind and decided to come down towards the Dartford tunnel instead. Uh, traffic was really heavy, still really heavy up above, but looking on Google Maps, it's only around this little section with the bad traffic where, as the other way, you got to go all the way around London, haven't you? So I think this is probably going to be the shorter one in the long run. It took me about 25 minutes, maybe half hour, stop start to get to here so far, and I'm probably looking at another 15 minutes or so, aren't we? Where we are now, Dartford Tunnel. So we've been over the bridge on the way down, back up, and going through the tunnel instead. I'm not too sure how deep it goes, but it's got to be fairly deep, hasn't it? It's a mile length. And I've always said this every time we go through here, which I don't like to think about, but if there was an accident in one of these tunnels which i presume there's been quite a few accidents in the past you are screwed aren't you because you're trapped inside a mile long tunnel no signal no service and you just got to be waiting around for a long time aren't you to even get out but god it's a little bit claustrophobic i suppose isn't it you know if you suffer from it luckily i don't so I can wait it out, but it's not a place you really want to be stop starting or getting stuck in, isn't it? Let's be honest. Still on the 8-1 at the moment. The time is 25 past 4. I've got two and a half hours of working time left. It's because I've been in now for 12 and a half hours. And driving time, I've got two hours and 11 minutes. So they've been running out at pretty much similar times for me. Um, right, yeah, right up at the A1, just about to get onto the A14 at the moment. So I should be able to get at least past Stoke. So I was thinking pulling over on the Levi's at Stoke and the A500. Um, if I find like a really good one around there, I might stop on that. And yeah, if not, it might be the service stations if we've got plenty of time left. So I'll just go way up from now, see how we get on really. If you're enjoying the videos don't forget to hit that like comment subscribe and also let me know if you've got any questions as well about doing hcv driver if you're a new driver you're unsure about anything let me know down in the comments if i can't answer it i'm sure one of our subscribers will be able to help out so yeah just stopped off at rugby services now for the night instead 
And you can see it's absolutely hammering it down. I'm absolutely soaking. <laughs> oh my God, it's hammering it down. As you may well have guessed it, change of plan. <laughs> As always, I always plan for wandering. It always goes completely wrong. So instead of going up the M1 and then cutting across Stoke on the A50, um, traffic might be a bit heavier than that. I've only got an hour's drive and I've got an hour's an hour and a half working time left as well so there's no point risking it so instead i've decided to stop off for the night at rugby services as you may as well have guessed it absolutely hammering it down but however on a good note i've got myself a big kfc teriyaki kfc burger for one pound 79 i think it was or something like that because i got a 10 pound food voucher for staying here which i could claim back so winning <laughs> The only downside is I plan to stay out in a lay-by instead of a service because I thought I'd be able to get to the A500 and I've actually bought myself a little camping stove, a little pan, I've bought rice into work with me, some veg so I can make a nice stir fry instead of eating shit on the road all the time but because it's crap weather I can't really be cooking that on the side of the cab can I? <laughs> so who knows that could be tomorrow's dinner instead. And to be honest instead of sitting in my cab as well or inside, inside there it's such a really nice and relaxing just to sit outside as well, isn't it? I've got the water fountain going off, so it's nice and relaxing in the background. I'm the only person here with my KFC and a camera. Why not? <laughs> Might as well enjoy it, anyway. Take a bit of peace and quiet, put my feet up. And I'll probably go have a really early night tonight as well, because I'm starting at about half four in the morning to be on the road for five, so I can get back down towards Warrington for seven past Birmingham traffic. Just a little tip as well, if you do ever stay out in the services or in a lay-by, make sure you leave the back door open if you've got nothing on it. Because little fuckers will still come, slice the side of the curtain, see what you've got inside. Or if you leave it open, they can walk past, see there's nothing inside, not worth hassle, and then hopefully just leave your curtains alone. And not just cut them for the sake of cutting them. And now what are the downsides about sleeping on the services? Don't you can hear it in the background? Refrigerated trucks. <laughs> So, windows are going to be up tonight and hopefully I can sleep straight through because I'm absolutely knackered. I started at 4 o'clock this morning, it's now 20 past 6 and that is me done for the night. So now it's officially on break, let's get myself ready for bed. So this is one of my routines that I do when I do stay out. I've just put on a fresh bedding, so that's going on the actual mattress itself. Uh, excuse creases, it's brand new out of the packet. So it's a little bit creased up still, but it looks a lot better as well. So I'm gonna keep that one on there. Got my cereal there ready for in the morning. I've got my kettle as well, but my power inverter is not working at the moment. So that's just gonna to have to be there for storage. Got my milk. So that's for my cereal in the morning as well. And this far end one above the passenger seat is my overnight bag, which stays in the truck as well. So that is me set up for the night. I do use a sleeping bag instead because when it's in the winter time and it gets really cold, sleeping bags just keep you that little bit warm as well. But in the summertime, this little thing is fantastic. It's a little USB fan. So I can plug it just in at the top here and then attach it to the top here and then I can have the fan just blowing on me. But it's not really the weather for that, so that can go away for now. And I just draw the curtains across like so. This side as well. in the middle took that across got quite a lot of privacy and it also blocks the light out really well so when i'm sleeping here you can't really see much light coming through which is fantastic so yeah that's me set up for the night nice and easy no fuss really i'm thinking about getting a little tv i can attach there like a 20 inch or something get one of them set up and then start watching my netflix currently i use either my laptop i've got my steam deck as well to play games on or just watch Netflix on my phone as well. I know it's a little screen, but it does the job, doesn't it? Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna leave it there. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for the next time we upload a video. Normally Monday to Friday, seven o'clock. This week's been a little bit off due to the bank holiday, etc. There's not much to film. I'm trying to keep as much as I can to the schedule. So take care of yourself. Have a great week and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.